Well, Derek, there's a reason we call it death piles and taxes. It's because I got a whole load of stuff that I just need to list, and I haven't been doing it. Well, Adam, you're not alone. That's why people are listening right now. I know that they're just tiptoeing around their death piles all around their houses and apartments. It's real fun to buy, but it kind of stinks to sell. So what can I do about it, buddy? Well, you're in luck. Uh, we partnered with a great company called Sellhound, and what they're going to do is they're going to list all your death piles for you. They'll do the work for you. Oh, I love it when people do the work for me. How do I get in on that deal? Well, first off, they're going to let you try it. First two are free on the house. After that, man, they got simple plans. They're just going to make it easy. You take a few pictures, you send it over to them, and they do all the work. That sounds really too easy, and I've used it myself. It's awesome. D-Roy, what do our listeners have to do to take advantage of this? Just do Death Piles 25, Death Piles, all capital letters, at the end when you're signing up for your payment. So, and you'll save 25% off whatever plan you go with. That sounds awesome. Get out there, start listing, start selling so you can go out and buy some more stuff. Dr. D-Roy in the house. This is the Death Piles and Taxes podcast. We're going to bring it hard and heavy with a lot of good information today because we uh, just got done doing a special recording with our uh, with a guest. Right, D-Roy? Hard and heavy. That's uh, that's how Adam rolls. So, yeah, yeah, yeah no, we did. We, we had special guests. We'll be coming out next week. I think we talked about it last week, so you can go back and listen if you want. Well, Whatever it is. Father's Day information. There we go. I've already, now i got to remember what we've talked about to not talk about it. Got to, got to go back and forth. I guess we can re-talk about it. We can always talk about it. That's all we do for hours upon hours upon hours. And whatever you've been doing has been working because we had a record-breaking download month for the month of May. So thank you to everyone who listens. We appreciate it, whether you're new or old, or you're original pirate or you're a newbie. Thanks for listening. Either That's way, we're, we're glad you're on the ship, and uh, hopefully we can keep selling those smooth waters. But... Uh, with the summer, I'm, I'm, I'm making a prediction that the summer is going to be slow. So it's already kind of going that way. Of course, it depends on what you're selling, what you're doing. There might be some choppy waters, but uh, it's a good time to get inventory. It's a good time to get things listed and, and reevaluate what you're doing, what you're getting into. Adam had a pretty good list uh, a couple weeks ago about things that could sell in the summer. So I'm not saying abandon hope or, or whatever. I'm just saying be prepared. Last year was a... a a whole different year from what we've ever experienced, and uh, sales went up in the summer. Traditionally, they're, they're low to begin with, but I um, was talking with Adam just a minute ago. He's getting ready to go on vacation. I think everyone's just getting ready to go on vacation. People want to be outside. People want to be socializing. So I'm thinking this summer slowdown will be a, a pretty good slowdown prediction. But, yeah, and, it, and it, I'm sure uh, it said could be. Um, I could be wrong. That the more items you have listed, the better opportunity you are going to be selling. That's that's always a kind of, you know. And it's a good time to, to load up on things and get ready for, you know, fall back to school, in-classroom school. There's going to be a lot more kids going to school. Uh, of course, you got fourth quarter. I still think um, people are going to be overdoing the holidays, getting out of a pandemic. Yeah, that's a true People story. are going to be celebrating. So um, I'm not trying to do this for uh, doom and gloom purposes. I'm just saying if your sales are slowing down, I don't think you're alone. Um, I you know it depends what you're doing uh, as well as anything of course what you're selling because if you're selling the right cards right now we got the basketball playoffs going on those are going good uh, depending on how that breaks down some might be better than others if you're trying to sell different things you know maybe not so much but I, I think too and now it's, it's one of those opportunities to uh, you know strike where they are it's hot there are lots of platforms to uh, to sell things on. Um, that's one thing I, I looked at. I, I found chlorine. I found a, uh, I think it was an 80 pound thing of oh, chlorine. Oh, that's a lot of chlorine. It was a lot of chlorine. It wasn't, I mean, it was like 80 bucks, but then I looked online, it was like $200, so a, a way to make money. But then I'm like, I have to figure out the shipping. The shipping, that's where that's going to be. 80 pounds is a, but if you do local pickup, I had somebody, exactly. contact, local pickup. somebody contact me on the uh, YouTube page if you 
If you're trying to get a hold of us, I haven't been the best at uploading to the YouTube because I'm liking the summer sun myself. Uh, but uh, was asked about contacting us. You can always hit us up on, on Twitter, online, at D-Roy Everett, uh, Facebook, wherever. Adam's all over Instagram and uh, the LinkedIn. Uh, he's got a little chat line if you want to chat with him. Uh, but they were they were saying you can't ship the chlorine because of the the uh, hazmat, which we talked about a little last week. And yeah, uh, you can go back into that. There, there's ways to do it. Uh, there's the right way. There's the wrong way. And then there's uh, you know, I'm not saying to do it, but I'm not saying not to do it. Just do with do with it as you will. I'll just say it that way. Um, but yeah, the the plant burned down because it's hazardous material. Like. There, there's some danger to be there, and there's also, you know, you can you can ship hazardous material. It's just going to cost you more. Or you can do local pickup, which is a great option. You can put it on the Facebook Marketplace or, you know, however you sell locally. And, I mean, you're going to be the only game in town. With that, you might need a little thick skin because uh, once people realize what you're doing, it seems to bring out the haters, and uh, you might be told what a... What a piece of work you are. Adam just kind of looks at me like, who cares? But you know how it is. Yeah, yeah we all we all, you know, we all, we all get there. To it. We all get a little sensitive, and then there's some of us that just don't care much anymore, or almost take it as a badge of honor or courage. But there's some people that might be getting into it, and this is their first thing, and like, man, I can make, you know, a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, but yeah, you go on there and they call you, you know, you're ruining kids' summers. They can't even go to the pool anymore because of people like you, or, you know, who knows what might come out of the woodwork. So, you can either disable comments or, or grow thick skin, but uh, when they ask you how you sleep at night, just remember it's with $100 bills cushed underneath that pillow that you just made. So Real well. You sleep real well. I had, a, I had an interesting experience, Adam. Um, I got, got a new bed, so we, we ordered a new bed over Memorial Day. And uh, this isn't going to be a pitch for them because they're not advertising with us, but if it was, I'd give a real good pitch. Uh, but the thing of it was, is, is beds can be a little spendy, especially if you, you go out and you get you something something real nice that's going to last some, some time. And um, Anyways, I, I made a mistake the other day. I was, I was talking to my wife, and I said, you know, it's kind of weird. This bed we bought has got like a 10-year warranty, and it's built to last, and it's going to be there. I'm going to sleep on it every night for at least a decade, right? Yes. At least. And I, But the price I paid, I said, you know... I kind of had to talk myself into it, or you have to sell yourself on this is a good investment. But I said, if this was a Michael Jordan rookie card, I wouldn't have even I wouldn't have even flinched and bought it because it would have been so undervalued. Yes. But it's so weird how your priorities and things go uh, that like there's certain like certain things that you need that's a necessity, even like a new car or whatever, right? Or car uh, car repairs and stuff. You're just like I don't know if I can pay that. You're gonna drive it every day of your life for the next, hopefully, at least decade. decade. Hopefully, and you'll put some small repairs and things into it. But then, if I sell you the right, you know, uh, if I'm like, well, this is an original uh, Rolling Stones T-shirt from the 1960s or whatever, and it's the same price, but you're like, well, that's way under. Do <laughs> you know how much I can get for that shirt? And, you know, and, and you throw the ten grand like nothing or whatever the number is. So, I just found that interesting. I, I know exactly. I mean, we went and looked at. Uh a new vehicle, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to spend that kind of money on a vehicle. There's no way. I, I need to get you on the Prius train. I need to send you to my guy. So I got the Prius Whisperer. So so hold on. Before you get there, does your Prius have a uh, like a California um, front license plate cover? Does it say like Oceanside or, or Carlsbad, California? No. Did you get VIP parking at the Bees game right next to the Maverick? Oh, no, I paid to park. Uh, well, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, right next to Maverick. No, I was up okay. a little bit. I, I usually, so... I saw Prius, and I assume <laughs> that they're all yours. So. I, I usually try to, like, not... I usually don't try to pay to park, and we'll go somewhere a little sketchy. Or yeah. My big thing with Bees Games, they got that, that railroad station down the road. Yeah. And if you park there, but I had uh, nieces and nephews, and I thought, I don't need to get towed and try to explain that one. I need to be safe. So I paid the big bucks and, and parked right, right at the stadium. I but, walked there. Well, oh, yeah, <laughs> from five-hour tour. No, no, the, the hotel down the street. We 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 stayed there. So well, I got Prius. I got, I, Prius. so I got a Prius guy, and I don't know how I found him, but this guy is like a Prius whisperer, and he lives, you know, out in rural Utah. I mean, I tell you where, but it doesn't mean nothing to anybody. But if you saw it on the map, you'd say, well, there's no way, because it's hard to find a hybrid mechanic to begin with. I'd have to take it to Salt Lake or a bigger city. And then there was a guy kind of a little further south that was doing a little bit, but and, and they were pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, so we got my wife's new priest, came out from with the leather package, the touring edition I was oh, talking about, with oh. low mileage. 
Well, the other day uh, we were we were up and, and threw some codes and had this uh, red triangle of death. I'm like, well, that's never good. So I call up my man, and uh, I, I, I can't disclose too much of this information because I, I need to keep it for myself, you know. Okay. So I call him up, and he's like, uh, what's going on? And I tell him, he's like, yeah, just bring it down or whatever. And he's in, like, a barn. Like, he's he's not, there's a... He's in his own place. Have you, have you seen Seinfeld? Do you remember when Jerry takes his car and it gets stolen because this guy loves the car more than he thinks Jerry's not taking care of it properly? I don't, I don't remember. There, there's, a, there's a Seinfeld where Jerry's mechanic steals his car because he's, he's not taking good enough care of it. <laughs> This guy cares about his car. So anyways, it's, it's like a farm, though. It's not like a, a, a shop of any sort. And so I take it out to the farm and leave it and call him the next day. And he's like, well, see, here's what, here's what I, don't, I don't understand about. I don't understand how he does it for the prices that he does it. But I know that he does a good job because I've had him work on things. So I say, what, what's the problem? And uh, he says, well, it's going to be the hybrid battery, which is always a bad thing. Very spendy, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, he says, but you have the original catalytic converter. He's a catalytic converter guy. Okay. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, I know he melts it down. Or he takes it. I know there's precious metals in there, and I know he can get money for it. I know. But I was like, as I was telling my wife, I'm like, well, I'm never going to do that. No. Like, I'm never going to do that. So he says, tell you what, I'll put on a new catalytic converter for you for free. I'll take off the old one, and I'll do your hybrid battery for $300. Sold. And I'm like... Well, it's the catch, because the last one I had to do in a previous car was $3,000. Whoa. And he's like, no, I'll just do that for you. I'm like, okay. Is it going to... He's like, yeah, you know, no problem. So I go to pick it up, and he's like, you know, if it gives you any problems, whatever, let me know. And and then I'm getting ready to leave, and he's like, hey, you want me to clean your, uh, your lights? Like, yeah, why not? So I go over, and he has this uh, this turpentine solution. He, he cleans up my, my, my lights. Then he gets, like, this air spray hose gun. And he's like buffering it out, and I'm like, I'm expecting he's gonna want me to pay for this. No, 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 no charge. He's not gonna charge me for Please it. Please tell me you tipped the man. And then he says, "No, oh, you've been offended." Then I got the other car, and he's like, "You want me to do those lights as well?" And I'm like, "I guess." He he just enjoys the. He's, and then he gives me a lecture about now you don't go. I can't say the place. You don't take this to the Jif Lube. Don't take this to the Jif Lube <laughs> because they're no good. You have to take this to the right place and get synthetic oil. He gives me this big lecture because he doesn't think I'm taking good enough care. I'm like, no, I do. I do. I swear I do. I swear I do. He's like, no, you got to take this. This car will last you for forever. If you take care. And I said, I said, well, do you, do you sell them? Are you selling cars? Because he's got a bunch of stuff and got yeah. piece them together. And he goes, oh, yeah. And he says, I sold nine Priuses last month alone. Holy cow. I'm like, oh. I said, well, next time I'm just going to come buy one from you. And he goes, yeah, you'd have a lot less problems. <laughs> So, next time you're looking to buy just a good family commuter car, I know you got bigger family and stuff, but I know you like the little commuter, good on gas mileage yeah. car. I'll hook you up with my guy, and uh, you can join the club. Well, like I said, gas prices going up and stuff, I'm telling you. It's the way. It's the wave of the future right they, now. They are going to continue to go up, so. <laughs> Anyone out there that wants my Prius guy, you hit me up in the, uh, you hit me up and I'll, I'll connect you. Shoot you a, a message here. Like, so we, we've got one here also. We're going to. Catch this after the break. We got a good tax question. Oh, I always love tax about question. vacation. We talked about vacation, so we're going to go over the topics of how do I make my vacation a tax writable consequence. So, so keep keep on your toes. Ooh. I know that's going to be fun, like since we're all about spending money. So we'll hit that on the uh, the second half. But I uh, said, yeah, we did. We, we we booked the trip. We we sold enough stuff online that we booked our trip to California. It, it took two years. But we figured it out, and that's how much money we've made from eBay sales. Is uh, like so we we got enough, to, and we're staying at a nice uh, Airbnb. There you go. Never stayed one before. I, I know Derek's had some uh, some good experiences. Wait a minute. Bad, bad Wait a minute. Experiences. I I took you to your. We went. We stayed in one of San Jose together. Yep, that's. I booked this on my own. Okay. I'm just hoping there's an orange tree in the backyard. I don't think there is, but it's like right on the beach. We're we're right in between. The beach and the bay in San Diego, walking distance to both, so we're, we're pretty excited. How are you going to Disneyland from San Diego? Well, we're going to go stay there, and uh, we think we're going to maybe go sp a, a day or two up at Disneyland. We're gonna get okay, I was going to say, that's a long commute. No, I mean, so we'll go up there. I guess you know you're from there, yeah. It's an hour and a half. Right on the beach, though. It doesn't get much better than that. I know, that's kind of where we, we figured we'll spend a lot of time. We looked at uh, making a trip to uh, to Texas, but I said, eh. I'm going to wait till football season starts. That's, no, what's in Texas? That's, that's how I... Uh, I base most of my vacations on football games, 
So we'll have a, a little heavier uh, let vacation me, trip. Let, let, me, time. let me give you the Clark Howard uh, vacation talk. Can okay. I give you this? Of course you can. You go for where's on sale, and then you figure out what to do once you get there. Oh, I agree. Because everywhere's got something to do. So I was Googling the other day. I could fly from here to Fairbanks, Alaska for like $120. Oh, that's a pretty good deal. And, uh, and I Googled, well, what's there to do in Fairbanks, Alaska? Now, it turns out there's not a whole lot. <laughs> But there is this tour that you can take that takes you from Fairbanks, Alaska to the Arctic Circle. You can see the Northern Lights and go up to like the top of the world, basically. Is Gilligan your or skipper? Well, your it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a seven to twelve hour round trip <laughs> ride on a, on a you know, express van. I thought it sounded awesome. My wife wasn't quite as sold on it. She wasn't sold on it. Huh? Uh, but I thought, you know... How often can you go to the last uh, road on, on Earth, basically, going north? That's a pretty good... I'd like to go. No, that's what I thought. I thought it'd be kind of cool. I mean, you get, maybe see a moose. I don't know. Sasquatch comes out and grabs you. But uh, anyways, if you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for you know, and travel... A lot of people looking to go right now. If you're looking for travel, don't necessarily have a place in mind. Go see what's on sale. And then you can do a quick Google search and see. You might be surprised. I mean, there's a place in Arkansas where you can, you can dig your own uh, diamonds. Oh, uh, there's, you know, there's always something places are known for. A place in Delta, Utah, you can dig your own fossils. You can dig your own fossils. You know, you just, you just figure it out. You Google it. Uh, don't, don't book it before you Google, but then, you know, see what's on sale. Go see what there is to do there. And you'll find something and be like, hey, that might be cool. Big tip right now is look uh, vacation or, or uh, car rentals before you get there. Yeah, car rentals, what happened is they sold off a lot of their fleets uh, during the pandemic because people weren't rent renting cars. Now they haven't replaced them as much, so... You might get a good deal to go to, you know, like San Diego with Adam, but the rental car might be as much as the plane ticket or more. So yeah, like so there's there's. But a lot then, of uh, then that's a sub spot if you're looking to make some extra money. There's a Airbnb or not only Airbnb like we we're talking about, but we've talked about uh, the ride shares, the Ubers and the Lyfts like in the past. Might be an opportunity. There's actually I should have brought this up. Um, we're recording this. We we've already done the show with my dad, but we'll be next week. So. It, but there's this big uh, campground out past where he lives. It's a big RV park, and, and it, 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 I don't know why it's so fascinating, but we'll go ride around there and look at all the different license plates, and it's full from, like, around the country. Right. The new one? The new one. Yeah. I think there's an opportunity to drive for Lyft or Uber because they don't want to haul up the whole RV and go into town, but you can just have a little run where you do Uber Eats or Uber, and it's a small town, so they all think I'm crazy. But I think you could get a lot of business just driving people back and forth into town, and also doing like an Uber Eats or kind of thing where you bring out the Subway sandwich or whatever pizza to these people. Because once you've parked your RV or, or your trailer for the night and you, it's you, it's down, tough to get up you don't really want to start up the truck and fire into town that you're not that familiar with anyways. But you'll pay 20 bucks for Everett Denny to drive in and he gets a tip to take you down to the, the grocery store or whatever, right? So that's true. So I, and I don't think that's uh, just in the small town I'm talking about. I'm saying if this is possible in the small town I'm talking about, Pretty much everywhere to have the same opportunities if, if you want them. Yeah, there's there's so many different new ways to make money. You just have to say, huh, I wonder how it is. And, I, and you know what? Even then, like, I don't even think you need to run it through one of those uh, services. At that point, you just talk to the guy who's in front of the shack and say, here's a little sign. Call me and I'll come pick uh, it up. That's true, too. You can run it that way, the new old-fashioned way. Yeah, I mean, you know, I just I just think there's, there's money to be made and maybe you just... You know, got a couple hours after work, but you don't mind running some people around. Who yeah. knows? I mean, like I said, there's, there's plenty of ways to make money right now. But So, yeah, we are getting closer to summer. Um, tax season just wrapped up, which is crazy to say. We're already two weeks past it, so I'm, uh, I, again, I'm still in a really good mood. I haven't been able to make it through all my emails. That's the problem. I get so he, hasn't, he hasn't read the email that uh, wasn't pleasant sent by me to this thing going on. So I, I'm waiting for him to, to shut me off. I, I haven't, haven't read that one yet, so... Uh, a lot of things going on right now, but no, it's, it's, it's summertime, kids are out for school, at least here where we're at, we had a great time, we went and uh, hit your favorite place, hit the, uh, the arcade, that was a fun place. Did you own the nickel gate? Yeah, the nickel gate. The problem is, is back then when it was nickels and quarters, you kind of always knew, because you could fill in your pocket, you knew what you had left, now they give you those, those cards, and my daughter is like, 
spin it as fast as she can well, get it. Well, you don't hand her the card, see? Well, she has her own card that she's able to use. It's not a credit card. No, I, I've went. I've took the niece and nephews. What you do is you put the 20 bucks on, but then you hold the card and you scan it for them. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could do that, but we like Again, to get parenting it. point from the non-parent. Come on now. Uh, well, the funny thing is, is, you know, my daughter went through all hers, and they got all her tickets and all her properties. How much did you spend on that uh, Grandpa Joe machine? That's the real question. Uh, we, uh, I was able to win a lot of tickets. For yeah, I'm sure you won a lot of tickets for it. And maybe that's the reason she went through her... Maybe maybe quick. she wasn't uh, the one swiping so fast. <laughs> maybe she wasn't. But my son, he still had like three quarters of what he put on it an hour later. Like I said, he, he just doesn't spend. He just goes to the little machine, takes his time, enjoys it. So it was, it was fun. That's the problem because you have to balance it out. Because you can't give one kid 40 and one kid 20. Yeah. You'd feel bad. Yeah. You, you, and they'd talk about it later and, you yeah. know, there'd be some therapy sessions down the road and... They, they definitely would, but no, one thing we, we've got to, you know, as far as spending money, retail, um, you know, online buying stuff is uh, right now we we couldn't get a, a trampoline pad. The trampoline pad that we have right now, is, it's it's shot, it's two years old, and we've got snow and all this stuff. So anyways, try to get a new one, try to get from two, you know, three different Amazon sellers, and they're all out of stock. Like, we cannot well, get there's, right There's now. your bolo. If you got trampoline pads yes. in the area. Trampoline pads. I said so we couldn't We couldn't get it for the, you know, trampoline. So well, what we're you a little do frustrated. Is, you got some old pillows around the house. You just uh, you get that and some twine. And and lots of new pillows. But we've been buying um, outdoor patio furniture. We, we've kind of finally said, hey, you know, let's buy a few things for the backyard. Kids are out there all day today, slip and slide, and, and uh, you know, got a little blue pool that they're shooting each other with so it was, it was really fun to be out there got some new chairs and stuff so that's 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 the thing that, that that kind of stuff there's opportunity to sell there's opportunity to buy and i know we talk about all this and we're just kind of getting a lot of this is just our lives mixed in with a, a little little sales talk i know um maybe we're not as hardcore as some other podcasts but this is what we are this is what you get this is what you're tuning in to listen to hopefully we have fun uh but but the thing of it is, I think a lot of people are going to take that approach this summer, and it is. It's, we can go outside, we can enjoy our family, we can do things. I think people have got this thing of not only, hey, I'm mortal, I actually can die, or things can go bad in my life. I want to enjoy what's going on right now. So if you have a spot to go outside and just chill, have a grill, and sit on some patio furniture and look at rocks or whatever you're doing, watch your kids run around, it might be the time that people are doing that more than, than buying, you know, crap off the Internet. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah, enjoying stuff. And, and speaking of that, like, uh, it, uh, Mark Eaton died the other day in a bike accident. Yeah. This guy's a giant. And they haven't, come, they haven't said the details yet, but I, I don't know. It just wear a helmet, <laughs> you know? Well, <laughs> we're laughing because Sean Bradley also had a bike accident. It's yes. not funny, but it's, it's, it's just it's ironic. It's ironic. He's a, he was a seven foot three man. I think yeah. Mark was seven four, seven something. something. They're yeah. both no Bradley seven six. I yeah. think. Anyways, if you're that t- uh, no, regardless, you should be wearing a helmet. But that's that's a long way to fall. Like even if you have a, a chain come off your bike or whatever, that's a long way down. You should wear a helmet regardless. But if you're if you're up that high, I mean, poor Mark was just getting to where he could get social security. <laughs> that's true. He's really getting the good spot of life. Just getting there. But yeah, like so this, uh, this just happened. Um, jazz great. Uh, Hall of Fame. Not Hall of Fame. We talked about him a few we did, weeks right? ago. Yeah. About how he went to UCLA and he didn't believe me. That's kind of weird. That is kind of weird. No, that's saving that one for the Halloween special. Yeah. But uh, Don't let us talk about you. <laughs> But no, I mean, use bike safety if you're outside. I, you know, I, that's why I don't bike. I'm afraid of dying. <laughs> you're afraid of dying. I'm gonna outlive Mark Eaton's my new goal now. That's a bad. Idea, that's a bad joke. Oh well, no, he's he was 63. I'm 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 not there yet. Yes. Yeah, so or however old he was. That's but, true. But no, I sold a pair of Mark Eaton shoes that I got from the Jerry Sloan. Uh, yeah. If you go back to that episode, one of, I got game worn Mark Eaton shoes that obviously now would probably be up in value. But I mean. That's just the weird world that we live in. Yeah, when people die, their stuff goes up in value. But it, really no, it, it was it was a strange accident, and it's weird that like you never know. Life's short. I think that's where we were getting at with some of the it stuff. Is. It's very short. Like I said, enjoy those moments. Um, before we kind of get to that, I, I'm still gonna go out there. We've talked about it, and uh, I know it's gonna one of those weird new things, but NFTs are finally catching up. These are called non fungible tokens. <laughs> It's essentially you buy a clip and it's yours forever. 
Do you do you remember or there there was the clip that the Charlie bit my finger? Yeah, you, I'm, I'm I'm not so on this Adam. But okay, go ahead. There there was the Charlie bit my finger. Kids from Britain or whatever, and went on YouTube, and we're talking hundreds of millions of views, like four five hundred millions. It was one of the first viral film, viral <laughs> yeah, YouTube the first things. video. Apparently, they're taking it off YouTube, and somebody is buying the NFT, and all it means is you own the rights to the video. It's yours. Um, they started, they're doing that. Um, Major League Baseball just announced that they're going to essentially do their first NFT. And it is the moment where Lou Gehrig talks about how he um, is the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That's essentially the clip that you're getting. So if these large corporations are getting into it, and telling you it's going to be something that sticks. Well, eBay announced that they're going to be able to sell on, on eBay can buy and sell these NFTs. The thing I don't understand is if you buy that Lou Gehrig clip, yes. do you get residuals every time Major League Baseball plays that? I believe that you do. Or every time yes. a TV show program or, or whatever it's played. I believe that's kind of part of the conversation. Because with the top shops, the shots with the NBA, I understand that's not how that's working. Yeah. So I, that's the part. If you own the rights and you like you own the copyright, so if LeBron hits a game-winning shot and you own that every time that it's on Sports Center, you get you know a dollar or whatever from it. That's awesome. But if it's not, I'm kind of I get the digital. I get the owning the digital. I get that it's kind of like you're going from having a CD to having an MP3 of your favorite song or whatever. I kind of get the digital collecting part of that. I'm having a hard time with the if you're really getting compensated for a part. That's like I said, this is the whole uh, craziness. Uh, your buddy Gary V just sold up about all of his. He had like 7,000 of them that he sold. He got like an original clip, piece of art, and then you got the NFT that we're selling. So guys out enjoying the biking weather. Right, it's, it's gorgeous weather. Uh, selling this all on the black blockchain, you know, uh, whatever, uh, Ethereum's half of them to... Ten of them, but but essentially you're you're buying tickets. Like he was selling it to where if you bought this NFT, if you bought this portrait or whatever, you got three years of uh, you know convention tickets. So that's kind of it's just some added value. Well, they did a uh, uh, WrestleMania. They actually did an Undertaker NFT, and they uh, they went they sold out really fast. They had a limited one of one, and then they had like a silver edition, and they had like but they were only selling it for that one night. Yeah. And the pair, well, I think they did two nights of WrestleMania, so technically they did two nights. But anyways, it was only open for a limited time. It sold really fast, and they climbed in value. So I think there's something there. I'm just not sure education. where it's at yet. It's, it's all about education, educating yourself I'm, to know what platform, I'm, how to work on it. I'm a settler, so I let the pioneers go out, and sometimes the pioneers get slaughtered, and then I come in and I settle, settle the land. Okay. So I'll, I'll let you guys go on these voyages and maybe... Maybe some of you make it rich, and some of you put some valleys down so I can put up a housing development. But Well, that, that's kind of my next uh, kind of, you know, I, I guess we should have brought that up with your, your dad. We, can't we, have brought this we probably up. should have just left, and we should have, probably should have done it back to back. Yeah. But, Man, that would have been a good good thing. Good. There's a lot of interesting stuff in next week's, uh, next week's episode. <laughs> next week. If you think we're derailed here. Yeah. Uh, very fun, fun, insightful guy that, that ever did he. So... I think the NFTs, like I said, the, when I just keep seeing these major, I mean, WWE, they just announced one, uh, Major League Baseball, uh, basketball's already on it, I'm sure NFL is going to be right behind it, so it, if you're kind of new to this and you're like, man, I want to kind of, you know, learn my niche, do everything, I would, I think that's going to be hot, I think that's going to be one of those things that the younger you are, the, the not... The, the more into the game at a younger phase stage, you're going to be better off long term because you're going to be the guy that knows because you were in it three months before the next person. There's definitely something to learn there, and I think there's something to be had. It might be like a Bitcoin if you got in early. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those, who knows? It's uh, it's definitely not going anywhere. Yeah, uh, it, it's something if they're investing and putting forth these platforms, and uh, it's going to be something that sticks around for a while, if, if not a long time. So I don't think it's a pog. I'm just not so sure that it's a, uh, you know, top straight of 10. And, and, I don't and know. Amazon. Yeah, well, no, I'll, I'll go on record saying I don't think it's Amazon. Really? I, no. Huh. 
I guess that is a, that is a high bar to, to place it against, but I think there's going to be a lot of things to it. You think you think whoever created the uh, NFT is going to be the richest uh, person on, on the planet here I, in 10 years? I don't know that, but I think that there's going to be so, a lot of traction. I'm going to take the under. A lot of people on the No, planet. I agree with you. I, I, I mean, I'm going to definitely take the under. It's, it's like an impossible bar to set. But I do think they're, they're going for high value. I think there will be some that will be the Mickey Mantle, you know, that you get that will be worth a lot of money. Is it going to be better than MySpace? Well, I got some stock in my space, so I. <laughs> You're holding out. Still. I'm holding out. Well, it's gonna have a second comeback. Will it be bigger than Napster? Oh, there you go. I, you know, maybe we can buy NFTs and trade them on Napster. That's the part where, where the Luke Garrick. Okay, so I own it or whatever, but there's still copies of it out there. I can still hear it. Like, yeah, you can still go on on YouTube or whatever. So then you put a file. I mean, that, I, that's the thing. I like, think that. Uh, do you really own it? That's the part that I'm having to struggle with. I think that they're going to get scrubbed. I mean, from out of anybody down on the earth that knows it was on the internet and got scrubbed, we know. I don't know no scrubs. We we know that it, even though you think it's out in the world, well, the that's internet, the thing. It can Co be copyright down. is a serious issue. So so, so maybe it if you actually down. if you're actually buying the copyright or you own the actual that thing, I get it. Or you're splitting it among the people that own that. Us and Joe Rogan, we know. Oh, Joe knows. I don't know. We, we all know, like I said, even though you think it's on the internet forever, that can't be true. Like Unless said, you know the secret places. Yeah, the, the secret we're places. Still, we're still, uh, you can still find all the podcasts on the dark web. Uh, I'm still trying to find it there. That and kidneys for sale. And sometimes they go hand in hand. <laughs> That's true. So, Well, there, there's your first half. So we're going to come back on the, uh, the, the break and get you some uh, tax information about your vacations. Hey guys, it's uh, D. Roy Everett and Adam Beasley from the Death Files and Taxes podcast that you're listening to right now. Your favorite account, I know. It's the greatest thing in the whole world. A lot of you have been asking what you can do to help the podcast out, and seriously, all we want is a review. Yeah. Hopefully it's a five-star review, but if not, be fair, uh, at least a four. <laughs> we know you're listening. Like I said, we see the numbers. We're all over the world. Like I said, it's just we see it. We appreciate everyone listening. Help us get a little higher up there. Help us uh, get more new Absolutely. listeners. The algorithms, people can help find us out, and it really does help. So if you can go to Apple iTunes, that's where a lot of you are already listening, or, or wherever you're listening. Spotify, Apple, you know, all of these different things. They're all out. Wherever you listen, give us a, you don't even have to write a review, just give us five stars. If you want to give us a review, that's cool too. We appreciate it, and keep listening. Thanks for listening, guys. Adam, my taxes are done, the season's over, I can just go on vacation and not have to see you again for another year. Well, yeah, because you're never going to have to file your taxes again unless it's another year away. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot about that They're part. never going away. So here at Adam Up Accounting, we're glad to help you during tax time. But if you're also a larger seller, if you uh, need to run payroll, if you really want some help running those uh, bookkeeping reports, because I know how good you are at that. Uh, we're happy to help you. We have uh, really good affordable monthly plans on these uh, higher seller, um, you know, you're running it like a business, you've got some good amount of income, we'd be happy to take care of you so that your uh, accounting needs are taken care of. Well, I don't want to talk to you though, I don't want to call up and just get some office off in, you know, New, New Brunswick or somewhere. <laughs> hey, we're here, you can message us on our website, shoot us uh, a message on social media, we'd be glad to help you out kind of tell you what options we have so that you can be more organized and teach you and help you make more money and pay less to Uncle Sam. Well, what's your website and where do I find you on social media then, my friends? It's, everything's Adam Up Accounting. Uh, you can look us up there on our website. You can follow us, get some Wednesday wisdom. We try to give you some tips. You can also link through the uh, podcast, Death Files and Taxes. Get those taxes uh, taken care of so you have more time to make money elsewhere. All right, D-Roy. Whoa. Easy now. we got some good questions. Our listeners, they're very insightful. Yeah, I know you know that. They're smart yeah. folks. They if, you're, smart. if you're on our pirate ship, you, uh, you you know what you're doing. And they're they're all over the world. That's the crazy part. We have somebody from, oh, there's only one I get, province, I don't know, what you, in, in Australia. Every province except one is their listeners. Oh, no, we don't even like that one anyways. Yeah, I don't know which, I don't know which one it is. 
uh, all over the world. The problem is, as we know, there's people listening in Alaska for months before it showed up on our radar, so who knows? We, we, Derek, Derek, uh, he's the one that bad mouth all the Alaska people. Not me. I love people in the great white north, right? Is that how you say it? I, 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 I don't think you're supposed to say that anymore. I, I like people in South... I, I, was, I was against the North Dakota pretty heavy yeah. until, you know. And Alabama, I might say a few disparaging things about them dating... Uh, Family members being good at football. <laughs> yes. But I've walked some of that back a little bit. Um, now, Even if it's true. <laughs> well, like we, we kind of hit hard in the first part, but uh, how do I make my vacations uh, taxable? That's that's one of the questions. That's a great question. And that's, that's a question that uh, has actually came up before when Adam was uh, talking at eBay, uh, our eBay group, our yeah. seller group up at the eBay office when we used to do that kind of thing. Um, I think it's something that everyone's kind of interested in. I've heard on other podcasts things like this come up before, and uh, I think that's where we're all at because, to me, it's one of those things that if I can go on vacation, kind of like we were talking about, yep. and I can go do this fun stuff but also write it off my taxes, uh, that, that's a double win, as they call it in the business app. So, so. Here's how you do it. Like it says, it's all based on sales volume, okay? And what I mean by that is if you're doing this kind of part-time buying and selling and you sell... $5,000 worth of stuff, you're going to have $5,000 worth of expenses anyway. So, I mean, because if you have $5,000, you probably had, you know, 11 to 13% in fees. You had your shipping. Like I said, you had to buy the items. You had to package it. Like, you, you don't really start making money um, until you're, you know, 15, 20, 25,000. Because, like I said, it just takes it takes time and it takes money. To it sounded like you were doing an auction there. I was about ready to bid. I was like, I'm 10, 15, 25,000, right, right, right. 26, 26. So that's the real question. Is, is You should never go negative. And that's what I mean. So when you're going through, whether you're doing your taxes yourself, you're, you're online to one of these um, self-help groups, um, get your taxes done, you have a, a professional... Um, I, I always advise and I tell my clients, like, I'm not going to take a negative $4,000 on the trip that you took because then it throws up question marks um, saying, well, is this a, a hobby or is it a real business? And that's always the question, too, is it, financially, are you responsible for those losses? And then did you maternally participate? Did you spend a legitimate amount of time into that business? Um, that's kind of the first thing. So are you actually making money in it? Then it becomes is it ordinary and necessary, <clears throat> meaning if you're going on a trip on your favorite rocket ship, that's you know it's a different uh, different show. Do you know what show it is? I, I don't. <laughs> Little Einstein. I'm, I'm enthralled. Though. That, that's uh, anyway, just a, just a show my kids love to watch. Oh, uh, well, I was never into Little Einstein. I was a little Hulkamaniac, <laughs> as you'll learn next week. Yes, you will. One nine hundred. Like when you go and travel, like said, are you going for it? Um, are you going to be buying things? And then you can be selling those things. Am I just going to uh, South Beach to go enjoy everything? Am I going to Orlando just to go and do anything? Or are you really buying items that you can, you know, sell? You need to look at it in the position if, if you were to be audited, which the chances are next to nil, like literally. But you need to legitimately be able to say, I went to this place and spent, you know, three hundred dollars on sourcing, and I sold those items for five hundred, six hundred dollars because of this trip. So let's say there's people that collect uh, Starbucks mugs out there, right? Yes. And Starbucks mugs are kind of, I don't know if you remember the old, uh, uh, what was that, uh, Hard Rock Cafe or uh -huh. something like that. This has kind of become the, the more uh, millennial, adultish type of that. You used to get the shot glasses at those places and people would collect them when you were, you know, younger. Or maybe some people still do, I don't know. But uh, there's people that collect, like, these these mugs, and you can only get them, like, the one in Utah. Has, the one in Utah has, like, an arch and says, you know, now in Utah or, or whatever. The one in Seattle probably has a space needle. There's people that uh, that collect these, and, and you know, there's, there's different variations. So Adam has one right on hand. Exactly. So let's say, you know, that you, that you Google the Internet to find the highest-selling uh, Starbucks mugs. And you find out there's one maybe in Hong Kong or maybe Paris or something like that, right? So if I make a trip where I have a suitcase where I go over to Paris and I'm going for a trip, but I'm going to fill up a suitcase full of these mugs and I can buy them for you know, 7 to $10 and I can sell them for you know, 50 to $60. At what point do I have to balance that out or, or maybe I'm going to China or, or wherever? 
I, I would tell you that's the best part. If you have a good professional, they can advise you on that. Because uh, except it, it's it's a shady area. May or may not be asking for myself to my professional right now. Say I want to go to Hawaii and load up on these Starbucks mugs. At what point do I get to write off? At what point is do I know you're going just to hang out at the beach? Did you spend, you know, like I said, uh, four hundred dollars, and did you sell that four hundred dollars to to make eight hundred? Nine hundred dollars. So some of it's your results. If it doesn't yeah. sell, you can't really claim it because it's still sitting in your closet. Exactly. At that point, it's a vacation because it's you didn't really sell those items. So how can you, in a in in a good conscience, explain to somebody saying, "Well, I went here for this purpose. Well, you didn't sell anything. So how does it count?" So I'm getting even shadier. <laughs> what if I I go and buy my scout shirts? I buy my uh, thrift store items where I know I spent you know a few hundred dollars or whatever, and I. How do I know if they actually sold? If I've listed them? If they're sitting in my death pile? You're, you don't have to prove it. Like there, it's you're, you're not going to be. Well, let, let me see exactly what you bought. Let me see exact. Like they don't get into inventory type items. So it's kind of an ish, more yeah. than a hard rule. It's always an ish, and like I said, and and the tax code is it's not black and white. It is gray. It's ishy. Um, you got to know. Did I really? make that kind of a transaction and again if you sold stuff if you made money you can mark down some of those expenses now same thing if you're paying your kids your wife those kind of situations that again kind of gets in that gray area <clears throat> um, perfect example I had a client who was audited we went through the uh, um, the IRS office it was, it was really it was intense but he had because I don't go through people's books. I have clients that we do. We go through everything for them. But when you come in, you give me your stuff. I don't ask you what your travel was. I, you know, I, I can't get into that much. You take it on their word. Yeah, I take it on their word. But he had listed some travel expenses that were uh, a conference in Washington D.C. And in the audit moment, the auditor asked for itineraries, asked for receipts, asked for plane tickets, which you know you can show up on your credit cards. It turns out that he went to Washington, D.C. for a conference, and he only went to three hours of the uh, four-day training. He, he only attended one little class, and he wrote off all of the travel for his entire family. So that dog didn't hunt, and that got thrown out. So if I go to China or wherever I go, I better keep my Starbucks receipt. Yes. I better show that I sold them on the Internet. Yes. I better... Uh, I have my plane ticket, itinerary, whatever, my hotel. I better have all that handy for when they come and say, you didn't just go hang out at the Great Wall, and I can show that I actually did some and, and the reality is, is it, it, does, it very rarely happens, and especially as the IRS has become inundated with so many things. But usually, if, if your eBay, if your store, if you're, everything, if you're selling more than $100,000, you're automatically on a radar. Well, I'm, I'm assuming this. I don't know this for a fact, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. But probably if you're claiming a lot too. So if I'm Absolutely. if I'm going all around the world on these trips and, and writing it off, and uh, you know that's probably sending up some red flags of okay, he uh, last year he went to Pahrump, Nevada, and that was his that was his big trip. This yeah. year he's going to uh, you know mainland China and coming back with uh, who knows what. So you have to look at it like it's it's, it's all in percentages. If you sell a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff, that's what your gross sales are. Normally, I said your your cost of goods sold, your items that you're actually selling are between, you know, hopefully, ten to to thirty five forty percent. So if you have sixty thousand dollars in travel, like that's going to throw up around. If you have more than ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars in travel, so obviously mileage, you know, it's a pretty easy thing to kind of judge. It's all about percentages, and hopefully that that opens up the ish area. Yeah, and you got to think like the IRS agent now, I mean, we can all say the IRS is a stupid government thing that really runs, doesn't function, is robbing us or whatever, but think if that's your job and you're looking at, you know, millions of people, yeah. there's got to be certain red flags that you're looking for. So, I mean, kind of think that way when you're when you're claiming things. It's like, okay, are they going to be looking for this or are they going to be looking for that? Yeah, I mean, and, where, and, where are you and, really going to... And try, try, to keep, try to keep it within the rules, no, no doubt about that, because uh, you're going to be paying a lot more in fees and having to hire a guy like Adam to represent you if it goes bad. But uh, you can keep off that, that radar, too, if you just kind of... So I always, smart. I always tell everybody, keep track of it. You know, plan that, yes, we're going to write this off, but knowing at the end of the year that I might adjust it or hopefully your tax professional will adjust it for you saying, 
well, I, I can't really justify that because it wasn't really for that. And those those Starbucks mugs are still sitting. You gave them out for Christmas presents, so uh, yes. that didn't go. I want to show you a few things that I have sitting in my Starbucks mugs. Uh, oh, there's some uh, silver. That might look like a dollar twenty-five in quarters, but really that's about thirty dollars in silver. Yeah, yeah. We should again. We should have just had Danny stick around, man. He uh, so so he'll go through the tills at work, uh -huh. and uh, it used to be a lot more common that you could find the the silver in there. So yeah, so that's that's a. Uh, that's my my Starbucks mug is my my nickel my quarter holder for all of my silver. If uh, I'm sure a lot of people know this, probably some of our younger listeners don't. There's a certain year where uh, quarters were actually made out of well all silver coins were made out of, out of silver. I think it was was it sixty sixty four or sixty five somewhere, somewhere right in there. there. Yeah, but before that, you can look at the sides of them, and if they they don't have that like edge of copper. If it just straight looks silver all around, then it's it's probably all silver. And they're worth more. Well, there you go. There uh, there was actually so um, I don't know if you've ever heard about this. Uh, it's not really a scheme, but there were people that would go to like uh, banks and they'd have large amounts of money and they'd ask for everything in silver uh, in uh, fifty cent pieces. Okay. And their whole thing is they'd go through all that coins and they try to get the fifty cent pieces that were made of silver. They would keep those and then they repackage and return all the others and they just go about doing that every, day after day that was kind of their hobby the the metal hound kind of thing is they they go so that you'd have like five thousand dollars worth and you'd go and get your, your your quarters or your silver dollar well silver dollars would obviously be silver but your uh, 50 cent pieces and then you just dig through it and i always thought to go out to a, a casino town where uh you have the blackjack and stuff where there's a lot of, a lot of the 50 cent pieces that might not be, you know, I don't know. If they, I don't know the procedure of if they go to the bank or not, if they keep them in the house, use them. But anyway, that was a uh, that was a thing that people were doing for a time. I don't know if they still are. Uh, it probably probably not as uh, frequent because most people don't use cash anymore. So it's getting to be a cashless society. It is getting to be cashless. So these these quarters are going to be worth even more money. Yeah, even more than the, the, oh, the, yeah, well, the silver market's taking off. So well, that's what I'm saying. It's 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 on its way up. And you might you need to cash out when it's when it's up though, because yeah. it'll come back down and then it'll be eleven dollars instead of thirty, and you'll be. Uh, you tell me about my my bolo on that Doge coin. Yeah, there's there's, there's definitely a peak in a valley. Yeah, but like I said, it all depends on if you've made enough or haven't made enough. We always want more money. There's always speculation, and that's the thing. Some things we talk about are bolos. Go out and buy, you can quick flips, you can make money. Some of our stuffs is kind of speculation. Some we hit, some we miss. Uh, and we like to talk about the ones we hit on, but like I said. If if buying NFTs and flipping them were, were that easy, everyone would be. Well, uh, it's fun to talk about, but you know we got we got graded cards that came back PSA fives, and yeah. we got ones that came back PSA tens, and uh, oh, you know that's just that's just life, right? I, I guess it did lie. I, I've I, I've told a fib on this show. I knew it. I said everything that I have is for sale. Like I don't have a PC. But I have one card that came back that is going in my PC. Oh well, let's let's see. Is it Mark Eaton? No. Okay. It's well. not Mark Eaton. Tom Brady, uh, first uh, Tampa Bay card. Now, why is this? Because I like it. Like I said, it, I, it's only a P, it graded a PSA five, so it wasn't like anything. So if I said, crazy. so if I said I'd give you fifty bucks for that, you wouldn't take. No, I guess I, I no, I do have a problem. If, if you could give me enough, I would. Say. No, okay, all right. But it's one that I really like because I just I, I like. It. That in fact he went there. He he basically gave the guys the the, uh, the the middle finger and says, "You guys think I'm done and washed up? I'm going to go here and do my thing." And he did his thing. So he had to live in an expensive mansion and yeah. uh, be surrounded by greatness and, and representative of, of what his life is. So that, I it's because you're getting older. Here's the thing: you're kind of having a midlife thing, and you're like, "No, he's he's not the end of his career. He's still got life in him." He does. Tommy can still do it, and so can I. That's, that's the way I feel. I, I like uh, seeing these these uh, guys getting up there a little bit more in age, show the young guys that they're not as good as what they think they are. You're, we're, we're, we're transitioning. You're going from the Bart Simpson to the Homer Simpson. Uh, just like the Toby Keith song, so I'm, I'm not as good as it was every day. But I'm Man, he's, once he's back and you got like a car wash. we got the, the, the wagon apartment. Well, they should be, you know, people should be safe. If, if you guys would not play with matches and stuff, we could have a podcast where you don't have to hear this kind of thing. Should we, should we put it on the sign that says, we're recording, yeah. and to turn it off? Please, please. I don't have that kind of pull around here. Maybe well, you, maybe, I, maybe I'll talk to him. Yeah, go over there and talk. I did that. Remember that one time I did. Oh, man, you just, I don't know this guy. Well, we're partners. <laughs> well, after Danny came in, I mean, he was... Oh, I forgot, I forgot to tell you my new store name. What's your new store name? I'm, I'm now Adam Up Accounting. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's your new event start. Nice. I guess I could have done that. <laughs> there we go. That was the laugh I've been working oh, for. Yeah. That's that's great. That's uh, that's perfect. So, well, I hope you're all safe and and, and uh, sound. Since summer's here, it's getting hot in here. We, we got to uh, open the door, man. It's it's getting warm. Get outside, enjoy some time with your family. Um, do we do we talk? I mean, we we talked about Mark Eaton on this one, right? Yeah, unfortunately, we did. The last one. God bless Mark Eaton. It, I know we were laughing, but it's more because we're uncomfortable. Yeah, he, life, he was a great jazz man. Life is precious. Like you said, enjoy every moment that you have with your family. And uh, he wrote, there are two things in life that are for certain. That would be death piles and taxes. Bye.